What is up creators? I hope you're doing well. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you liked that little intro that I shot all the way in New York. It was from a recent trip to New York with my friend Patricia. We went there to take some street photography and to pick up some gear. So right now I'm debating on whether to make a vlog about that day. And I don't know if you guys are interested in my vlog. So I'll put, it, put down in the comment sections down below if you're interested in maybe seeing that vlog and testing that format out. But in the meantime, I said, well, why not make a tutorial about vlogging itself? What is vlogging? The key aspects to keep in mind when we're creating videos in this manner and why you should vlog in the first place. Okay guys, so starting out, what is vlogging? Well, vlogging in essence is just a video journal. You basically record in a chronological manner, whether it be a day, a week, a month, an event, or maybe just having a memory it just you record everything that you're doing you're the central subject and in that way you can tell a story so there are a lot of ways that you can create a vlog it's not just the typical just pointing to the camera to your face or the smartphone there are several manners you can do it and make it a bit more artistic or more creative but we're going to cover them in a bit first of all we're going to talk about why you should vlog well there are several reasons you could do it professionally for example myself i don't really show anything of my personal life my family in my vlogs i do share some professional things for example sometimes I talk about some tips for YouTube or some tips for photography in my vlogs sometimes I just use it to represent myself which is well I am the brand my channel is Tony Fuente so I have to represent myself and I use it for you guys to get to know me a bit better sometimes I just use it as an excuse to take out some gear and talk about gear show you the behind the scenes of what I'm doing so that's a professional world of vlogging you can also use it to entertain maybe vlog while you're doing something entertaining for example maybe you're a downhill mountain mountain bike rider and you like to take people on your adventure and what you're feeling throughout all the experience of going down the hill uh, at razor sharp speeds. You can also teach things. For example, Peter McKinnon does it a lot. He goes out to vlog and yes, there's a lot of gibberish and a lot of funny things while he's vlogging, but also he gives some tips on to photography or how to use some lenses or how to fly the drone. It's a great way to just get across some knowledge as well without sitting in the studio every single time. You can also use it to show a bit of the behind the scenes on how you do things. For example, Creative Ryan or YC Imaging, they like to use the vlogs as BTS to how they shoot their music videos. And that gives you a lot of insight to the audience on how to shoot uh, music videos. For example, you, you can see how they move, what gear they use, uh, what ambience, what stages. It's just fantastic to see behind the scenes because you get a little insight into their work. And the same thing applies to personal vlogs. Maybe you can see the behind the scenes of a person that you really like and you get to see how they live their life and what they do, what is their routine. And that way you can get to know a lot of people a lot more. Now, another way which is very underrated to use a vlog or why you should vlog is to create a memory, just a memory of the time that you were spending maybe with your family, maybe with your friends, maybe capturing something. It's a great way to create a little story which you can look back in a couple of years and be just remembering all those fond memories. So those are some reasons to vlog. Some of them are professional, some of them you can share it with the world, and some of them you can even just keep it to yourself. In essence, vlogging is just a story of yourself, of your life, of whatever you're doing, and you can do whatever you want with it. You can keep it personal or you can share it with others. Now, there are several ways into creating a vlog. For example, the most typical and the most basic is just pointing the camera or the smartphone at you and just talking to the camera straight ahead, just saying where you are, what you're gonna do, with who you are, and just showing a bit of the surroundings. So that's the typical vlog that we all come to know. But also you can basically not appear on screen. You can make a lot of cinematic shots, more bureau-like oriented, more artistic, just showing the scenery maybe in slow-mo, and then you slap on a very nice music track on top of it, and that's more of a cinematic vlog or a travel feels vlog, for example. Another way you can do it is in a similar manner, just not appear on video, or maybe yes, but you can narrate or voice over over the video of after in post when you get home. So after Sevilla and Cordoba, the next stop on my journey was Barcelona. Now in Barcelona, I stayed for three days and I filmed basically nothing. No photography, no, no video. Basically, it's just a flat city and yeah, the architecture. So that way it creates a different type of vibe. You can also put subtitles and create a more of an artistic look. There's everything, there's no limits really when it comes to vlogging. The limits are only our creativity. Now there's another way you can do it. For example, just sitting down over here and doing a recap with narration over it. For example, if we were to make a vlog right now, hey guys, what's up? I just got back from my trip to New York. I went there with my friend Patricio and we walked around. First of all, we arrived quite late into the city. So we went down to see the sunset in Domino Park. It was just a beautiful 
beautiful landscape in the sunset of Manhattan. Then the next day, a bit more refreshed, we went to Brooklyn Bridge, then to the vessel. And at the night, we went to a Halloween party because, well, we crashed a party of a friend over there. We didn't have any costumes, but we have had a great time. Then the next day, yeah, we walked around a bit. We went to B&H Photo. I picked up my DJ Avara. My friend Patricio got himself a 16 mil for Sigma. And then at night, we went to the Rockefeller and also to the Empire State lookout points. And it was just fantastic. I really love that city and I plan to go back in the future. We took so many photos and yeah, it was nice. You see what I did there, guys. I just did a mini recap vlog within this video. So that's a great way you can do it as well. So as you can see, there are several manners you can create vlogs and you can also mix all these ideas up and to create a more of a complex storyline. Next up, let's talk about the crucial parts that a vlog has. Now, a vlog in essence is just a story. It's similar to a movie, it's similar to a book, similar to a chapter in a TV series or a children's book. In essence, it is a story. It should have the same parts as a film. So just like a movie, a vlog starts starts with the setting. You're setting the scene where you are, with who you are and what you're gonna do throughout the day. And that's in essence, well, the basis of a story. Then goes all the development into the conflict that goes all the way up into the climax. Now in the climax is where all the development of the storyline and the plot and everything comes together with the music and everything is just fantastic. The epiphany, the most cinematic scenes, and then there's some release when you get into the resolution. So in essence, a vlog as it's a story, it should follow the same pattern in order for the audience to feel that the video is complete. Apart from those parts, the vlog adds another factor, which is the hook. Now the hook goes at the start and it's a fact to 30 second sequence that you're taking from the most interesting part of the vlog further along and putting it at the start to create a bit of curiosity into the subject or into the audience. Now I've heard a lot of times that people refer to the hook as starting with the chase. And this is referencing the movies from James Bond or from Mission Impossible where you sit down at the theater and the first sequence that you see is a giant chase throughout a Moroccan city with James Bond running around and people shooting at him and you don't know why he got in that place, why they're shooting at him and if he survives because immediately the scene ends and it says 13 days before and you're in a total different scenario and you're gonna figure out what happens further along in the movie. So in essence, what it's doing is creating engagement because you as a viewer, you want to know how James Bond got into that situation and it's gonna be explained further along in the movie. That's what the hook is. It's creating an element of surprise, an element of curiosity and an element of mystery into something that happens further along in the vlog. It could be something polarizing, it could be something epic, it could be something beautiful, it could be something funny anything that really highlights it during your day you're gonna put it at the start in the hook now the other part which is very important in a vlog is pacing and the overall emotion that you want to transmit with your video now it's important for vlogging but it's important for any type of storytelling and in essence a vlog is a storytelling uh, type of video now how quickly you cut it will determine how fast you move from a to b and how fast the movie or the story goes for example right here we have two similar sequences both of them are shot with exactly the same clips but look at them this one is cut in a slower manner and look how the music is also a bit slower a bit more moody just in accordance to the cuts which are every five or six seconds and it just lets the viewer appreciate a bit more the scenery Now, in the other hand, we have this sequence with the same clips, which is cut every two to three seconds, and the pace is a lot faster. The music also goes in accordance, and it's giving a more of an energetic feel. <laughs> You have to be very objective and very purposeful of the music that you're using and also the rhythm that you're applying to your vlog. Is it gonna be fast paced and high adrenaline music? You want to make your audience feel very energetic and pumped up or you want them to be a bit more relaxed, a bit more laid back, a bit more chill. It all depends on the pacing on how you're cutting your clips and the music that you're using. So it's very important for us to understand what rhythm we want to apply to certain parts of the video. For example, in the climax, we want the clips to be cut in a faster manner so the energy is going up and you're getting the audience pumped up and really hyped but in parts for example in setting the scene or in the solution of the plots at the end you want the clips to be cut in a slower manner so 
the audience gets a little grasp, a little time to understand what is happening. And you can also combine it with music that really represents the emotions that you want to convey. So music is definitely very important. So in essence, a vlog is just a chronological story about yourself and you can do it in so many manners as we've just seen. You can follow some guidelines to a better storytelling, but in essence, you can scrap all of it and just do whatever you want because it's a story about you guys. You can do it in any creative manner that you want. You can do it whenever you want and however you want it. Just be creative and it's just a creative outlet. It's just another means to express yourself. So that's going to be it for today, guys. I'm going to see you in the next one. And put me down in the comment sections if you're interested in my new New York vlog. I'm Tony Fuente. Subscribe, all those things. Cheers to all of you and see you.